Thank you for clicking on the video. And here on Nerd Mimic, we're gonna unbox another game. This is Arkham Horror, the card game. This is published by Fantasy Flight. And this is the original edition that came out in 2016. So this wasn't really something I was planning to pick up. I saw it at Gen Con and it went down to 10 bucks. So I thought I'd give it a try. I know it's quite popular. It's still in print in the fact that it is a living a card game at L. CG. So this first edition box is out of print, but they have a newer edition box, which is even bigger than this box and has enough cards for four players. Plus there is also a bag in the new edition. This one does not have a bag and you have various tokens you need to grab to utilize, but we're still going to check it out. I just want to get a sense of the flavor of this game as I know it's quite popular. The other reason why I decided to pick up this edition besides it was on the cheap is it matches the size of another card game by Fantasy Flight, Warhammer Quest Avenger card game. And these two boxes are exactly the same size. As I mentioned, this newer edition is in a much bigger box. It's going to be mostly empty, actually, because you only need uh, some cards. There's really nothing else uh, with it except for the small tokens and a bag. So I guess they want you to uh, get the bigger box and fill it with additional cards. You can see here it's highly rated on BGG. It is the number one rated customizable game and overall it's rated 28. So really high up there. The thing that worries me the most really is the weight, the difficulty of this game. Now, there are multiple how to play videos out there done professionally, and I'm not gonna make one of those. Uh, they probably could do a better job than I could ever could. Uh, that being said, I'll try to incorporate some of my gameplay of the first scenario, just to show you a flavor of the game, but also just to help me instill the rules so I could show my daughter later. Welcome to the channel where we talk about not just D&D, but also board games and comics, technology on Saturdays, and gamer snacks on Sundays. And we also do monthly giveaways. And this is our giveaway for the month of November. I'll put a link down below how you could win this original TSR module, You Won the Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh. We featured this recently. It's not our first module that we gave them away and it certainly won't be our last. This is the original uh, module. It's not a reprint. It has a fold out map and everything. And uh, hopefully uh, one of you lucky winners will enjoy this prize. If you're watching this from the future, I'm sure we have other giveaways going on and you can click our main channel page for that information. I'll do a general overview of this game first, then do a complete unboxing and have a gameplay session solo with the first scenario. Yes, you can solo this game. So you can tell from the artwork here you got investigators and technicals. Yes, this is a Cthulhu based game. Every player picks a single investigator and tries to progress through locations and challenges using cards to play. And there are various tokens you use to denote resources and actions. So let's uh, get to it. Uh, let's take a look at this artwork a little bit closer. It is pretty nice and inspiring. The second edition box looks very similar, except this picture here is blown up, so it takes up the entire space, uh, sort of like how this design is done. But most of the other expansions and stuff have this original first edition look. So here is the side panel, it looks like investigator art on the side there. On the top is the title, on the bottom is the title, and on the back of this sealed box, we have a look at some of the artwork and the cards. There is a quote from H.P. Lovecraft here. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. This game comes with five investigators. However, there's only enough cards to form two investigator decks. As I mentioned, the bigger box has enough cards for four players. There are only three scenarios in this box, so it's a very short campaign. The first one is really just a tutorial, and the other two are a little bit more meaty. You can see here at the bottom, it's rated 14 plus, as it is a complicated game. It's for one or two players, or at least this box is. It can go up to four players with an expanded box set, and it takes approximately one or two hours to play. This game is all about investigating, finding clues, and obtaining resources. 
that would be these tokens here. And you use these resources to pay the cost of various cards. Your investigator has certain abilities. You can sort of see here on the top. You can pair it against, say, a stat of a monster. And if it's higher, you win. But the chaos factor is every time you do a skill check like that, you have to grab a token uh, blindly and some of the tokens will modify your skill ability minus two, some will increase it, some will just give you a complete fail. So uh, these tokens uh, ha don't have a bag here, but we could probably use the lid cover as a source and just pick blindly. So that becomes a source of frustration, but also a challenge. The ancient ones await. Can any among us uncover their secrets and live to tell the tale? We'll find out. So let's get this box open. And let me see if I could find a piece of plastic that's protruding out. All right, finally got it. Always exciting to unseal a new board game. Right, there we go. Let's get the lid off. And the box itself has a nice textured look to it. We got a learn how to play rules reference. On the bottom lid looks like we got advertising for other fantasy flight games. Top of the box. All right. Okay, so let's flip through this rule book very quickly. As I mentioned, there are a lot of how to play videos for this game on YouTube. So you may want to check those out after you see this unboxing. The rule set looks pretty short here, but just a lot of mechanisms you gotta keep in your head. It's a, only 16 pages long. And you can see it's even expanded into this rules reference. And this, this is even longer than 15, uh, 16 pages. This is uh, 32 pages. Look at this index. So it gives you an idea of the complexity of this game. Let's flip through this very quickly. So a lot of this is clarifications. Um, some of the keywords on cards. But yeah, they're also describing how to play, what a prey is, some basic ideas as well. But the fact that they have to make this, it gives you an idea that you're in for a complex a game. Appendix here. Skill test timing. Setting up the game, card anatomy, there you go. All right, so here is the campaign guide for the three scenarios. And you can see here, you can have an easy mode, standard mode, hard mode, or expert mode. We'll probably do easy mode here. And these are the various tokens that you're going to place off to the side or in a bag that you have to modify your skill checks. You can see when you play harder, yeah, you got a lot of uh, dangerous ones like minus six, minus eight to your roll. Let's see what's else in this campaign guide. <laughs> Do not read until the end of the scenario. So the first campaign we'll play is The Gathering. And the second scenario is called the Midnight Mass. And the third campaign mission is called the Devourer Below. 
a little cheat sheet to keep a log of your achievements. Got various cardboard tokens. Uh, these would be the resource tokens here. We have tokens to modify our um, skill checks. All right, and others that represent uh, bad things and good things. All right, so we'll uh, punch these out later. Has a paper insert here. We have tiny little cards here. These denote location when you are um, playing the game. So instead of standees, you got little cards to represent your character. And on the flip side, I believe that's representing when you're injured, but uh, I, I could be wrong about that. I have to refresh my memory about that. All right, but very cool. I'm glad they have these instead of standees. These look like the deck of cards that you could customize your deck. Maybe locations are in here. Looks like these probably more. Let's check out this one first because this has the investigator right on top. All right, big thick deck of cards and you can see it is a card game. There's no dice here. All right, let's take a look at these first. So our first investigator is Roland Banks, the Fed. He's the one recommended to start off with. We got Daisy Walker, the librarian. We've got Skiz O'Toole, the ex-con. We have Agnes Baker, the waitress, which is the same character I used in the Arkham Horror game book that we featured recently on the channel. I might try to run it with her, though she has a poor combat skill, so I might be in big trouble, but we'll see. We'll try to use Agnes again. And the last character we have here is Wendy Adams, the urchin. Okay, so we'll set these off to the side. On the back uh, is a little short story, flavor text, and how you could build the deck for them. All right, so we'll set those off to the side. This looks like scenario cards for the first adventure, the gathering. We'll have to construct a deck for these acts and stories, but we'll move on. These are location cards. We've got the attic, hallway, cellar, parlor. This be the second mission, so I'll Skip that very quickly. And there will be a third mission devourer below. Don't want to spoil the surprise, I suppose. But you can see some of these cards are duplicates. They all have intriguing artwork. Here is a creature, ghoul priest, flesh eater. So very nice artwork. Let me set this down here, some more cards. So these are more creatures you're gonna encounter. And when you run this uh, adventure, it'll tell you what cards to put in the deck as your encounter deck. We'll just flash through these very quickly. All right. I'm assuming the second deck is pretty much the same stuff. Let's find out. Okay, so these look like uh, character cards to customize your deck. It looks like this one was more encounters. So you have various abilities you can obtain. These, uh, the artwork on these cards are pretty fantastic. Yeah, a lot of different art pieces. I guess that's part of the joy of having the living card game. If you enjoy the art style and pick up a new deck, it's gonna have a plethora of new artwork. So there are a lot of expansions for this game. 
both big boxes and small little boxes. Some of them just have a single scenario. There are multiple decks of just brand new investigators that come with their own uh, pre-made decks. So yeah, a lot of cool artwork. So some of these, of course, are duplicates because maybe the other player wants to have the same card in their deck. And this looks like a weaknesses that you have to pick or maybe acquire. All right, there you go. All right, so put this down. Take a look at the artwork on the insert, but it's uh, basically the cover. All right, so that is it for the unboxing. Now get this uh, set up. I have to organize the player deck and the encounter deck, and we'll see if I could finish the first scenario. So for my first attempt to play through scenario one, we are gonna use Agnes Baker here, the waitress. She has a willpower of five, which is really high, intellect of two, combat rating of two, and a speed of three. Three is about average. Now, she has a special ability, Sorcerer. After one or more horrors placed on Agnes Baker, deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Limit once per phase. There is a little flavor text here. I remember another life, one of sorcery and conquest. So she also has a health and mental sanity of uh, eight here, health of six. On the back of the card, we have a little bit more uh, background to her. Agnes Baker may just be an unassuming waitress in this life, but in a previous life, in a time and age undreamed of in the modern world, she had been a powerful witch. It began when she found a strange artifact, a key of some kind, in a dusty collection of family belongings in her attic. When she touched it, the memories came flooding back, along with one word, hyperbolia. The more she delved into the visions and memories of her former life, the stronger her powers grew, and the more frightened she became. So this also gives you an indication how to construct her deck. There are more detailed instructions when in the rule book here on the back. Here you can see what cards you need. Each card has a number on the bottom and you just pull those cards to construct your deck. So that's what I've already done here off to the side. She has uh, multiple mystic cards that you have to put into her deck. She has also a couple of specialized cards that's just for her. She has the heirloom, that's the relic that was in the backstory. And uh, you can see here, after you play a spell card, you draw one card. The etchings on the surface change from day to day, shifting and moving whenever I'm not looking. I guess I never showed you the back of the cards, but all the cards look like this on the back. She has a special weakness here called Dark Memory. Um, place one doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Forced, if dark memory is in your hand at the end of your turn, reveal it and take two horror. No, not again. Every time you construct your deck, you also have to uh, pick a basic weakness. Uh, there are multiple weaknesses, so I just picked Amnesia here. If this is uh, revealed, choose and discard all but one card from your hand. So that's uh, pretty terrifying. Um, there are other cards I have to add to the deck, and these are them. All right, so that will be all shuffled up together to construct my uh, player deck. Now to construct the encounter deck for the gathering. On the card here, there are multiple representations of a torch symbol. So you're gonna need all these. And you can see these cards all have a small torch symbol. All right. And then you will need other cards as well. You could see on the set, there are the various other symbols representing cards that you need to incorporate into your deck here. Obviously the other campaign scenarios have different symbology. So I have uh, pulled out all of those cards. There's rat symbol, 
multiple other symbols in the construction of this deck, as well as more off to the side here, and some larger monsters here. I believe uh, in the set, we are supposed to set the ghoul priest off to the side, all right? So maybe that will be introduced a little bit later. This game does come with two cheat cards. It shows what a round sequence will involve. Uh, mythos phase, which is skipped during the first phase, investigation phase, enemy phase, and upkeep phase. On the back of the card, it denotes what actions you may do. So each investigator can take up to three actions yeah, you can use them or lose them, up to you. You can draw a card, play a card, activate a card, move, investigate, fight or engage an enemy, or attempt to evade an enemy engaged with you. And you guys have this other symbology here at the bottom. Your deck size should be 30 for each investigator. And with all those cards that you pull, you will be 30. However, each character has two special ability cards, plus you have to pick a basic witness card. So basically your deck is gonna be 33 cards. And that's what we have here. And now to give it a nice shuffle, you don't wanna end up pulling the same card again in a, several times in a row. That would maybe give us some problems. And when you wanna put away the game, there are numbers on the bottom to denote which order they should go. So you can find them easily to construct another deck if you wish. Welcome to our gameplay portion of Arkham Horror, the card game. I'm gonna to try to solo the first mission using the character Agnes uh, Baker, who is a waitress. Now, this campaign included in the game is titled Night of the Zealot. The first mission is called The Gathering, but there's a little flavored text to start off with, the ghoul's hunger. Friday, September 18th, 1925, Arkham, Massachusetts. It is the end of a long and abnormally hot summer. The first hints of autumn beckon, but the heavy heat persists relentlessly. A silent, unspoken anger grips the town. Tempers are short, and in the last week alone, there have been numerous reports of townspeople coming to heated, violent blows with one another over simple misunderstandings. But now, a call from James Hankerson, he claims to have found a dismembered body in his barn. Blaming the weather would be too easy. There is something wrong with this town, and not a whole lot of this old soothsayer uh, can do to stop the sliding. My arguments uh, indicate that a small group of investigators will soon take note of these strange happenings and so forth to make things right. I'll be watching their progress, but I won't hold my breath. All right, so we'll set this aside. I guess there's a little bit more flavor text here. For part one, the gathering, you and your partners have begun investigating strange events taking place in your home city of Arkham, Massachusetts. Over the past few weeks, several townspeople have mysteriously gone missing. Recently, their corpses turned up in the woods, savage and half-eaten. The police and newspapers have stated that wild animals are responsible, but you believe there is something else going on. You are gathered together at the lead investigator's home to discuss these bizarre events. So I have the, the game all set up, and we start off with the location, the study here. Our mini card denoting where we are is set off to the side. I have a deck of cards I can draw from. We have our encounter deck. We have two cards removed from it. Uh, the ghoul priest is the big monster we probably will encounter later. And there's this NPC card that we need to pull out from the deck as well. So we'll set these off to the side. I have other location cards here. And we have our main player board. I'm gonna set it somewhere down at the bottom here. Now, the other thing I have to do is uh, draw some cards to start off with, but these cards up here um, give some of the story. This is the agenda card and here's, this is the act card and there are multiple different ones. So let's take a read and you can see they're placed together to form like a book. So what's going on? It is late at night, you're holed up in your study, 
researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from the parlor down the hall. At the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. How creepy is that? The next page. As you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid wall. You are trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. So here is your study, and there's more story to read. You've been investigating the strange events occurring in Arkham over several days now. Your desk is covered with newspaper articles, police reports, and uh, witness accounts. You can see here the door is gone, right? So when you start off or enter a location, you flip the card over. Here it's sort of locked, and then here it is unlocked. So uh, because we start here, we get to flip it over for free. And it says the door to your study has vanished. So we're gonna set this card down. This number denotes how many clue points we need to obtain. So I'm just gonna use a uh, dice here to represent clues rather than have a whole bunch of tokens everywhere. The other thing uh, we have to do is Agnes or every investigator starts off with five uh, resources. So I'm just going to use a 20 dice sided dice to denote how many resources I have here. And the other thing we have to do is draw five cards. So let me do that now. And for the very first uh, play, I can inspect these cards and I could discard a mulligan and replace them. So this card here is an event card, uh, a spell. And here I have a, a skill card here. So I get a boost. There is another skill card here, uh, forbidden knowledge. And I get a charm card. I was hoping to get maybe a gun of some sort, maybe to increase my combat. So maybe I will get rid of this Forbidden Knowledge card for now. Okay, so I'm gonna place this off this side and discard pile. I'm just gonna draw another one. All right, so this one I drew is another uh, spell card. All right, so uh, we will be stuck with these. Now, the other thing I have to do is uh, do three actions. Let me put my cards over here. Maybe we could put the location cards off to the side because they're not needed right now. Now, in this bag, I have all the tokens that we have popped out for the easy mode. So some are zero, some are plus, and some are negatives. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I should also mention that the scenario card, they have denotions of what the special tokens mean. This is easy mode, and on the hard mode, these tokens represent more worse negatives. All right, so we're gonna play on easy mode. I don't know if you've seen this bag before. It's a official TSR bag. This was uh, uh, implemented with their dice game, Dragon Dice. So there are multiple different colors. I, I have uh, most of them. There's a black one, green one, yellow one, red one, I believe. Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, it's synthetic leather, but they stand up to the test of time. All right, so uh, anyways, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to investigate. Uh, I have two clues I need to obtain to advance the story. My investigation is uh, using intellect, that's two, and I need to match a two to do it. So I should be able to do it, but because there is chaos in the city, I have to draw a token to see what happens to my first skill check. So let's see what we got here. Oh, I get a minus one. Look at that. So that means I fail. Now, when I fail this, uh, nothing bad happens. I just don't get a clue. So this token goes back in the bag. I have two more actions to do. I am going to try again. Uh, and if I fail again, I'm gonna have to maybe commit additional uh, resources. So I'm gonna do a investigation, two <laughs> versus two. Uh, this is probably gonna fail again, but let's see what we got in the bag now. 
Oh no, it's another minus one. All right, so that has failed twice. So I'm gonna try again a third time, but this time I'm gonna commit a card here. Uh, this is a wild. Uh, you can see these cards have different symbols and they boost the attribute of your character. Um, so I'm gonna use this wild to boost her um, intellect there so she can investigate better. So now my value is gonna be three. So I'm gonna put this bag or token back in the bag. And get a good shuffle, good shake. Let's see what we get this time. Da, 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 da. Oh my hand. All right, oh no. <laughs> what does this mean? Okay, let's take a look at the card here. Um, Number of ghoul enemies at your location. All right, so I guess I have to spawn a ghoul. Oh, wait a minute. That is not correct. X is being like algebra. It's a variable. So X is the number of ghouls at my location. There are no ghouls. So there is actually uh, nothing bad happening. It's just counted as a zero. So my three, that given that I boosted it, uh, definitely beats a two. So I finally get one clue. And uh, um, now it's time to move on to the next phase as I have accomplished the investigator phase with three actions. And we're gonna go to the enemy uh, phase, but there are no enemies. So we skip that. Now we go to upkeep phase where we reset actions, ready all exhausted cards. Each investigator draws a card and gains one resource. So I'm gonna draw a new card here. And it looks like I got a event or insight spell here that can boost intellect, which uh, I might have to use again to investigate as well as willpower. So we're gonna set this down here and I get a resource as well. So this five becomes a six, like so. And I have to make sure I don't exceed eight cards. That is the card hand deck limit. And uh, definitely I don't exceed that yet. We have to move on to the mythos phase, which we skipped during the first round. I got to place one doom on the agenda here. So once again, I'm gonna use a dice to represent that rather than clutter my uh, field with a lot of tokens. We have to uh, have each investigator draws one card from the top of the encounter deck. So since we only got one investigator, I only have to draw one card from the top of this deck, and let's see what bad thing happens to me here. All right, it is a swarm of rats. They are a creature, very low health and combat score. Hunter, a horde of crude rats skitters forth in an undulating wave of claws, teeth, and molted fur. Pretty cool artwork there. So that is gonna show up in the study. Let me put this chaos token back in the bag and I will try to do combat. So my combat strength is two. For this rat, they only have combat strength of one. So I should be able to defeat it. We'll see. So I drew, <laughs> oh no, and one of these cards. Well, actually that's okay. So it means a zero. This is not a ghoul, so I do beat this swarm of rats, and uh, I'm gonna set it off to the side. And we uh, count this as part of our victory points for our total at the end. I have two more actions to do, and what I would like to do is investigate and get this last clue. So I don't wanna miss this, and I'm gonna add this new card I drew and boost it, the intellect, okay? So now my intellect score will be three, and hopefully I get a good draw here. <laughs> okay, another skull, but that means zero. Okay, so I do pass, and that means I get this other clue. So now I have both clues here, and I get to uh, move on. Um, before I do that, uh, I still have one action left, but maybe I should see what happens as now that I have two clues, I get to place them here and advance the story. So on the back here, it's gonna be more flavor text. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. 
Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see a door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your, the hallway below. You jump through the doorway, land on your feet on the soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with a scent of rot and decay. Uh, let's see, put in play the hallway, cellar, attic, and parlor. Discard each enemy in the study, uh, but there are no more. And uh, start everyone in the hallway. Okay, so that will be done. So we got our new locations that I set off to the side. No more study. And we are gonna be in the hallway here. And let me put this off to the side as well. We got other various locations. They are all connected to this hallway, which has a square symbol. And these are all connected and next to it. All right, so we'll just organize it this way, perhaps. All right, the other thing we have to do is read this new story for Act 2A, The Barrier. So it looks like we need to get three clues here. A glowing barrier blocks the path of your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss at, at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Uh, perhaps there is something in the cellar or attic that can help. Objective, when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requested number of clues to advance. So yeah, that's three. All right. So we are in the hallway here. We gotta also read the text here. A moment of panic and disorientation strikes you as you land upon the floor of the hallway. The world spins as if turned on its head. And then because we land there, we unlock it. See the next uh, location. The walls of your house are splattered with mud and your hardwood floor is gone, replaced with a dirt path. So there are no clues in this location. Since there are no clues to obtain here, I don't wanna waste my time here. I got one action left and I'm gonna move. I know the flavor test mentioned some creatures uh, going underneath, so maybe it might be better if I start in the attic. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move my character to the attic here. And this attic card says, the smell of rotten meat assaults your nostrils as you approach the attic stairs. So, okay, not a good sign. And, oh, so the picture does change. Opening up the door here, I could get two clues from this location and uh, only need to get a one. Uh, so that should be easy to investigate. Um, the flavor text here, a bloodied carcass of a malformed beast swings from a meat hook chained to the ceiling. Blood drains slowly from the carcass, dripping into a small barrel. All right, so uh, forced, after you enter the attic, take one horror. So I'm gonna take a horror, and I'll just use an eight-sided dice to uh, represent that. I'll put a one here. And when I do take a horror, I can actually um, damage an enemy in my location, but there's no enemy uh, currently. I'm gonna move on to the next uh, round, and we do the enemy phase. There's no enemies. Uh, upkeep phase is uh, getting additional card and one more resource, and so now my resource goes up to seven. So where is the seven here? I'm gonna draw a new card, and this time I get arcane initiate. So this is a assist and it uh, increases my willpower even more. And uh, I got a little fast action here. I can search on top of my cards for a spell card and draw it. Okay, so that might be helpful. I'll put this off this side here. And now we have to draw an encounter. All right, so let's see what badness happens here. Oh, another swarm of rats, not too bad as it only has a fighting ability of one and only one health. 
And when we do combat, by the way, uh, basically you only do one point of damage. Uh, other things might modify that, but uh, only one point of damage is what we need here anyways. So we'll put this in the attic along with me here. The other thing I have to do is advance the doom here to number two. All right, and once it hits three, we have to advance the bad agenda. The acts here are positive and these are gonna be negative. My first action is I'm gonna combat this swarm of rats. Well, take a token here. Oh, it's a minus one, but I still pass. All right, so two minus one is still one. So I uh, beat this one and it has only one health. So we will set this off to the side. And then my second action is to investigate. I don't think I'm gonna commit anything extra to it because it is a two versus one. So I should be able to get a clue fairly easily. Let's draw a token. This is a plus one, so that's good. But anyways, I only get the one clue, not two clues. So uh, let me use another die to represent uh, how many clues are left there. Uh, I got, uh, well, one clue left there and I have one clue that I accumulated. So let me use that there. I'm gonna try to get another clue there as my third action. Okay, oh, minus one, but I still passed. So now I have two clues, but I need three of them. I need three of them to advance the act here. All right, so that is it. Enemy phase, no enemies on the board. Upkeep, I am gonna draw a card and get another resource. This new card we have, another asset card. All right, so if I spend a resource, I could increase my intellect or will. So this is gonna be really, really helpful. We could uh, put that there. And my resources now turn to eight. There's no limit to resources. Here is an eight. And then now, well, now I don't think I have more than eight cards, I do not. Now we're gonna increase the doom. All right, so doom goes to three. Now we have to advance this story and flip it to the back here. Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground and the many rooms have turned to dirt. It is almost as if you have been transported somewhere else entirely, though every now and again you recognize the elements of your former home. The lead investigator decides Choose one, either each investor discards one card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two whore. So I don't wanna take two whore, especially if there's no monsters around me. Uh, that might be an option if there's some monsters around me, but I will not do that. So I'm just gonna discard a random card. So I'll put my deck like this. And uh, yeah, we'll just pick the top card here. So this is the card I'm gonna have to put off this side, all right. Okay, so this uh, gets put away and now we are, have to turn to agenda 2A, Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving away and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting in the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels trying to find a way up. You probably don't want this here. You probably don't want to be here when they do. All right, so this uh, takes a doom of seven to escalate. Uh, but right now it's a blink because we just uh, switched it. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, each uh, player draws a card and uh, uh, from the encounter deck. So that's uh, this one again. Let's see what we get. Hmm, interesting. This is a treachery card, grasping hands, revelation, test against your skill. I guess that's uh, um, the speed. Three, for each point you fail, take one damage. Decaying hands rise up from below and grasp and claw at your ankles. How creepy is that? 
All right, so let's see. Well, I do have some cards that can modify my speed, but these are associated with evading enemies, and I, I think I might need them later because I have poor combat skill. So if I take one damage, uh, I think I'm okay with it. I'm full health right now. So let's get in a bag of tokens. Hopefully nothing too bad. I don't regret this. All right, that's zero. Okay, so uh, nothing bad happens. I do evade these grasping hands. Thank goodness. All right, so we'll set that off to the side. And now we uh, do our three actions. So I already got all the tokens from here. Now I have to move and I can't move directly into here. I have to actually go to the hallways, right? So my first action is to go to the hallway and now I'm gonna go to the cellar because the parlor is blocked. So the cellar, the stairs leading down to your cellar are slick and they glisten with a thin layer of ice. We end up in the location and your cellar seems to have been replaced with an underground network of ice tunnels and caverns. The cold chills you to the core. Force, after you enter the cellar, take one damage. All right, so we are in the cellar now. That is our second action. Uh, my horror, I got one damage. And let me use this uh, 12 side dice to represent how much uh, damage health I have, okay? So one each. And uh, let's uh, try to get some clues here or something. But now this involves a four. So I'm gonna have to commit some cards to get a clue here for sure. So I have this one card, Arcane Studies. And if I spend a resource, I get to increase the intellect. So I think I'm gonna spend a lot of resource. I have a whole bunch here. I might do something like five because there is a minus three token in this bag. And yeah, and I, I just wanna be able to uh, beat uh, this four. Because if I add five to my two, that'll be seven. So even if I get that minus three token, it'll still be a four, I beat it. So I'm gonna commit a lot of resources to this. So I'm gonna burn down five of them. So I have five left, okay. And I'm gonna place this uh, card to the side since I just uh, utilized it. Now we gotta draw a token here. And it's a minus two. All right, but uh, I have two plus five is seven, minus two is five, and that beats four. So I do get another clue and I get three. All right, so uh, now we can advance this actually. So let's flip over the story card. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage into the parlor has vanished. Reveal the parlor. Okay, so we'll do that in a bit. Set aside the Lita Chandler into play in the parlor, spawn the set aside ghoul priest in the hallway. All right, so let's do that. So put this away and we reveal this parlor here. So let's read this story first. The parlor entrance is blocked by glowing uh, and phantom barrier. You cannot move into the parlor. You're unsure what would happen if you try to cross the threshold of the strange barrier, but based on the extreme heat, sure as hell don't want to try. But uh, now it's open. So we flip it on the side and you can see the picture is different. Okay, so you can resign and, um, you know, quit the game or retreat, um, sort of like a forfeit condition. Uh, while Lita Chandler is not controlled by a player, she gains a parlay. So this is a, some skill test of some sort. So we're gonna be in here, that is revealed. We are in the parlor and we have to take the ghoul card and Lita 
you have to take these cards and I have to put the ghoul priest in the hallway and Lita in the parlor here. All right. So um, I guess these won't be needed. So I'm gonna set these off to the side. So we got more space to see what's going on here. And I am in the parlor. I believe I have two more actions left and I'm gonna have to do something here. Should read the act three card here. What have you done? A woman with a torch stands in the parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams, furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. Objective, if the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to defeat this ghoul priest. That's a combat rating of four and a health of five. So that's pretty high. So this Lita character is basically a card in my hand. I'm just going to leave it here. And we get an additional combat rating uh, when she is with us. So we have a combat rating of three. Um, the monster is in the hallway, so it's not in our location yet. Uh, we could wait in the enemy phase uh, for that. Since I got two actions left, I might want to um, draw new cards. This should be set at five, not 15. All right, so I should maybe get two more cards um, for my action, or maybe one card and one resource. Let's see what happens with our first card we draw. All right, so we have a deep dig. So this is not necessarily gonna help us with combat. Uh, this one helps increase our willpower or evade, but we want a higher combat rating. So let me draw another card then. All right, savage, scavenging. Uh, this helps increase intellect. All right, so not too helpful for combat and we didn't draw a wild. I don't have more than eight cards. Okay, so those are my three actions. Now we move on to the enemy phase. So this is uh, the enemy is going to move toward the closest uh, investigator. Essentially, this ghoul priest is going to move out of the hallway and end up in the parlor along with us. So once uh, they move in, they engage in combat immediately. Uh, I don't get any uh, reprieve. So he's going to automatically do two points of damage to me. This uh, creature attacked. Now we'll get exhausted. I'll flip it to the uh, side, like tap it in a bit. But let's read the text here. A figure in red robes wearing a bone mask. It gibbers and snarls before leaping to attack. All right, so we're going to flip the card to the side like this. I'm supposed to take two points of health damage, but you could also see I take two points of horror damage. So my health. I have three damage now out of six, and then my horror goes up to three. But don't forget, Agnes' special ability here, deal one damage to an enemy at your location um, if I sustain uh, one or more horror. So uh, this uh, creature will get one damage already. So uh, let me put uh, another dice to rec represent how much damage it has. Okay, one damage. Now we're in the upkeep phase. We have to ready all exhausted cards. So basically this one's gonna flip up again. And then I have to draw a card and gain a resource. So this resource goes up to six. Hopefully we get a good combat card here. All right, leather coat. It's uh, armor, this coat was not the most fashionable choice, but it did feel warm and reassuring in its bulk. All right, so that might help us out. It doesn't take uh, any resource to use, and I get uh, like two additional health, so to equip it. So I, I think I'm gonna do that for sure in a bit. All right, so uh, now we go to the mythos phase. We increase our doom. 
So our doom is going to be at 1. And then we uh, draw an encounter. All right, hopefully it's something not too nasty. Grasping hands again. Okay, I think we're going to deal with this. It's a speed test of 3. And uh, I have 3, so I'm not going to use any resources or anything like that for it. So let's uh, see what happens. And what is this? It's a special symbol. So let's see what it means and translates to. It means a minus two. All right, so it looks like I fail. So with grasping hands, I have to take a, uh, for each point I fail, I have to take a damage. So, uh oh, I am now down to one health. I got five damage. All right. So now I got three actions. First action I'm gonna do is equip this leather coat. So that will increase my health by two. And I don't think I have anything else that's gonna increase my health. Oh, here's one. Um, Arcane Initiate. And, um, but it's the same thing. No, I guess it's like a hat symbol instead. Hmm, let's see what else I have here. If the skill test is successful, here one horror. Hmm. No, I don't think I have anything else that will increase my health. All right, so we're gonna have to do some combat here against the school priest, but he can also retaliate, so that won't be too nice. I got two actions left. I think I'm gonna try my gamble and draw a card, and then the last action is gonna be for sure combat. So let me see what happens here. All right, so I do get a weapon here. It is a knife. And let's see, I get a plus one for my attack. And if I discard it, fight, you get plus two uh, for this attack. Uh, deals additional damage, so I guess, uh, you know, you could chuck it. Unfortunately, I have to spin an action to equip it, so that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to equip it, and uh, that will be my last action. There are some cards I have here to evade um, creatures. This is a spell. This evasion attempt uses a... Uh, um, the intellect or willpower instead of uh, speed. So, you know, her speed is very high. And uh, maybe evade, and I can use willpowers to speed. And if I succeed, I can deal one damage to the enemy. And then I have another one here survival instinct innate. If this skill test is successful during an evasion attempt, the evading in the investigator immediately disengages from each other enemy engaged with him or her and may move to a connecting location. So this is probably not going to be as useful as this blinding light for sure. If you evade, that is considered an action. So I'm going to have to save that for next time. So now that I've completed my three actions, the enemies uh, basically are going to attack me. That's the ghoul priest. And yeah, it looks like I will sustain two more hits to my health and two more damage to my sanity. Now my horror goes up to five. And then my damage here goes up to seven. Uh oh, I think I am done for. Let's see, seven. I got one hit point left. I got a total of eight. Because I took on the horror, there's a damage to the enemy. So the enemy now is down it uh, has two points of damage. I need to do three more. Oh boy. Okay, so we reset. I draw a card and gain a resource. So this goes up to seven. And here's seven. Hopefully it's a great card to use. Oh, it's another knife. All right, that's why you want to have a good shuffle. All right. Anyways, we'll set it down here. And I can still use it to boost... Uh, this card here. So, um, I want to uh, commit to a fight now, 
But uh, before we do that, the other thing we have to do is increase our doom by one. So this goes up to two. I have to draw an encounter card. Hopefully this doesn't kill me. All right, we got a ghoul minion here, unfortunately. It was a colossal and nameless blasphemy with glaring red eyes, and it held in bony claws a thing that had been a man, nine at the head of as a child nibbles at a stick of candy. This was a quote from H.P. Lovecraft. Um, that is a pretty cool depiction of ghoul. And this has a combat rating two and health of two. All right, so uh, we're gonna have to set this off here. It's getting a little bit cluttered. So I can tell you already, I'm probably not gonna pass this scenario. Agnes is in big trouble. I only got one hit point left and I gotta defeat this creature. That's the goal to pass here, not necessarily this guy. So I'm gonna ignore this one, focus all my combat on being the ghoul. So I have three actions I can do that. Maybe I'll do two regular with a regular knife attack and the uh, last one I'll, I'll, I'll chuck it. My first action is to do a regular attack. I have a base of two. I have additional one from Lita here. That makes it three. The regular knife uh, makes it four. And I'm gonna boost it with this knife card and uh, make it uh, uh, five. So we go back to our chaos bag here. And uh, let's, let's get lucky here. What we get from the bag? Oh no, what does this symbol mean? All right, so this means minus one. If you fail, take one whore. All right, so um, I made my value five and I have to be four and I, I just minus one, so I, I succeed. So that is good. We put this back in the bag here. Damage is up to three. Three. Okay, I'm gonna, well, maybe I chuck it. If I chuck it, I could do two points of damage. It does additional point of damage. And I get plus two, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna discard this knife and uh, see what happens afterwards. I'm not sure, uh, as I haven't actually done this scenario before. So my second action is gonna be attack, so it's two, three, four or five and i don't think i have any other cards that can boost uh combat here i'm pretty sure i do not yep okay so got five again this is it hopefully it's a good throw agnes it's a minus one all right so that works i have five and i need to be a four so we put this token back Gets two more points of damage, so this guy is knocked out. All right, we'll set this off this side. And because we did that, we advance this story. When the rogue creature falls, a fiendish swarm burrows back into the ground and the chaos of the house quiets. But the stranger in your parlor does not seem relieved. You broke my seal that set up to trap the ghouls within, she rises. She raises her torch. Now we must take more direct measures and burn this hell pit to the ground. The lead investigator must decide. It was never much of a home. Burn it down. This hell pit is my home. No way we're burning it. Um, I think I should trust her and burn it down. So she knows what's going on. So I'm gonna burn it down. And I guess we read resolution number one. So let's go to our scenario book here. Uh, first of all, I can't believe I beat the scenario with Agnes, but uh, I'm glad I did. All right, so uh, yeah, resolution number one. So if no resolution is reached, uh, we read this, but we are gonna read this one here. You nod and allow the red-headed woman to set the walls 
and floor of your house ablaze. The fire spreads quickly and you run out the front door to avoid being caught in the inferno. From the sidewalk, you watch as everything you own is consumed by the flames. Come with me, the woman says. You must be told of the threat that lurks below. Alone, we are surely doomed, but together we can stop it. And I guess there's some other things you can do here. You record that your house is burned. And then we earn the Lita card into our deck. And this does not count against our 30 deck size. And our lead investigator suffers one mental trauma for watching the uh, house burn. So I guess uh, that means we probably have to pick one uh, additional weakness card. We'll see. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory points. Uh, value on each card on the display. Each investigator earns two bonus experience points if he or she gains insight into the hidden world of mythos. This will become more relevant if we continue the campaign. So maybe I'll make a video about that in a bit. All right, so that was really cool. I've always seen this game around and seen people play. I never actually uh, partaked in having a set of my own. And as daunting as the rules uh, may seem, it wasn't too bad. I know this game is quite popular. If I made any gameplay errors, leave me a comment down below. But I think I, I did it correctly. I just realized I didn't make a big gameplay error regarding the use of this card. You can see here at the bottom, when the investigator at your location successfully attacks a monster enemy, that investigator does plus one damage. So I should add one additional damage every time I hit that uh, large ghoul creature and probably would have defeated it sooner. Uh, that being said, Agnes still uh, defeated the creature and completed the scenario and we have her in our deck now to help out with the rest of this campaign. I definitely thought this game was much funner than I thought it would be. I mean, I've seen other people play as I mentioned, but never partaked of myself and did a solo game. I can't wait to show this to my daughter. She might be intrigued as well. And maybe if I find a scenario pack or expansion set on the cheap, I might pick it up now. So thank you for watching. That has been our overview and uh, gameplay and uh, unboxing of Arkham Horror, the card game. Uh, hopefully you found this entertaining. And if it is that interesting, you could pick up a set for yourself uh, this first edition box is uh, still actually on sale at some places, including on Amazon for 20 bucks. So you can find it very inexpensive and uh, get a flavor for this very popular LCG game. As always, thank you for watching everyone. Keep on adventuring. And if you found this helpful, of course, hit that like and subscribe. It's certainly free to you and helps me out on the channel. Thank you for watching. Once again, have a great day.